The second principle of new media, modularity. Hello there, this is Alison and Yum are going to discuss all about modularity. But first, we are going to have a quick discussion of new media. What is new media? Categories that gather around this discussion includes computer multimedia, computer games, DVD, CD-ROM, and internet. Do these topics that revolve in a popular press really what new media is? What about feature films that use 3D animation and digital compositing? What about all images and text image compositions such as photographs, illustrations, layouts, and ads which are also created on computers and then printed on paper? What about television programs and movies which are shot on digital video and edited on computer workstations? Shall we count this as a new media? The popular definition of new media identifies it with the use of a computer for distribution and exhibition, rather than with production. New media identifies to be digital, can be manipulated, networkable, dense, compressible, and interactive. Does new media include paper-based publications such as magazines and books? The answer is no. But if they are enabled with digital activity, then they are considered as new media. Therefore, texts distributed on a computer like websites, ebooks, PDFs, and emails are considered to be new media, whether the texts were distributed on paper or not. Similarly, photographs which are put on a CD ROM and require a computer to view them are considered new media. The same photographs printed as a book are not. Lev Manovics, in the language of new media, he proposes five principles of new media to be understood, quote, not as absolute laws but rather as general tendencies of a culture undergoing computerization, end quote. The five principles are numerical representation, modularity, automation, variability, and transcoding. The second principle of new media is modularity. Modularity, in general terms, means the degree to which a system's components may be separated and recombined. Modularity within new media represents new media as being composed of several separate self-sufficient modules that can act independently or together in synchronization to complete new media objects. It defines new media in different independent modules that can represent themselves independently and can also be combined together to represent a single piece. In Madeleine Serapure's The Language of New Media, or playing Lev Manovic, she cited an example on modularity that, end quote, though a typical essay has, in some sense, a modular structure with sections, paragraphs, sentences, and words that have a certain amount of independence and can be modified separately, one of the aims of writing an essay is precisely to reduce their independence to tie the elements together in a sequential, logical manner." End quote. Lev Manovic identifies modularity as the fractal structure of new media. But what is a fractal? A fractal is a never-ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems. This principle holds that the resulting object of new media practices have the same structure on different scales. Elaborating on this premise, Manovic observes, and quote, Media elements, be they images, sounds, shapes, or behaviors, are represented as collections of discrete samples. These elements are assembled into larger scale objects but continue to maintain their separate identities." End quote. These elements are assembled into larger scale objects but they continue to maintain their separate identity. The objects themselves can be combined into even larger objects, again without losing their independence. For example, a multimedia movie authored in popular macromedia director software may consist from hundreds of still images, quick time movies, and sounds which are all stored separately and are loaded at runtime. Because all elements are stored independently, they can be modified at any time without having to change director movie itself. 
these movies can be assembled into a larger movie, and so on. Another example of modularity is the concept of object used in Microsoft Office applications. When an object is inserted into a document, it continues to maintain its independence and can always be edited with the program used originally to create it. Yet another example of modularity is the structure of HTML document. With the exception of texts, it consists from a number of separate objects such as GIF and JPEG or JPEG images, media clips, shockwaves, and flash movies, which are all stored independently, locally, and or on a network. In short, a new media object consists from independent parts, which, in their return, consists from smaller independent parts, and so on, up to the level of smallest atoms, such as pixels. Pixels are representation of information, and computer programmers structure the information such that the representation can appear to users as an image. Any information that can be stored on a computer can be represented as pixels on a monitor. The way information is structured in a JPEG image is, however, quite distinct from the way information is structured in a block of text. World Wide Web as a whole is also completely modular. It consists from numerous web pages, each in its turn consisting from separate media elements. Every element can be always accessed on its own. Normally, we think of these elements as belonging to their corresponding websites. But this is just a convention reinforced by commercial web browsers. Netomat browser, which extract elements of a particular media type from different web pages, like web images for instance, and display them together without identifying the websites they come from, highlights for us this fundamentally discrete organization of the web. The entire web, Manovic notes, has a modular structure composed of independent sites and pages, and each web page itself is composed of elements and code that can be independently modified. In addition to using the metaphor of a fractal, we can also make an analogy between modularity of new media and the structured computer programming. Structural computer programming, which became standard in the 1970s, involves writing small and self-sufficient modules called in different computer language, subroutines, functions, procedures, and scripts, which are assembled into larger programs. Many new media objects are in fact computer programs which follow structural programming style. For example, most interactive multimedia applications are programs written in the Macromedia Director's lingo. A lingo program defines scripts which control various repeated actions such as clicking on a button. These scripts are assembled into larger scripts. In the case of new media objects, which are not computer programs, an analogy with structural programming still can be made because their parts can be accessed, modified, or limits. If a particular module of a computer program is deleted, then the program would not run. In contrast, just as it is the case with traditional media, deleting parts of a new media object does not render its meaningless. In fact, the modular structure of new media makes such deletion and substitution of parts particularly easy. Similarly, since Photoshop, the parts a digital image are usually placed on separate layers. These parts can be deleted and substituted with a click of a button. This modular structure of new media creates more flexibility and is more user-friendly, especially in today's electronic age. It not only made internet surfing faster and detailed, but also much more organized. Thank you so much for listening. Again, this is Alison Lume at pichikin.blogspot.com.